Hello guys, today we are back looking at the PCB way Scania R7 30 build. In the last video we tried to set up our rear uh, drive wheels here with a little bit of a suspension system. Bit of improvement to do there. But today we are going to take a look at the front steering axle but also drive wheels because these both have uh, N20 motors in them. So that's going to be another interesting little element to this build. So as you can see from the top here, this build is sponsored by our friends in PCBWay. And if you don't know, PCBWay are the company that have made some of the uh, PCBs that I use in the models. So they are a prototype PCB manufacturer, actually they're a professional PCB manufacturer. But they're of interest to us because they do prototype PCBs and they're pretty cost effective. So if you have a design, make sure and check out PCBWay if you're thinking of getting it manufactured. As you've seen at the start there, I had already started to create some of the parts for this. So, the first thing we had to do was cut this front section off here. That was the section that would have originally gone uh, under the cab. Actually, it would have gone under this piece and screwed in here. And that would have held the solid axle that we had on the front. I had to remove this front section from our model because I needed to fit in our motors. Because this, of course, we want to have six drive motors in it so that every wheel is driven. So we have another N20 motor here. That N20 motor is just in a little sort of a case. It has two little screws in there. They are, I think they are M1.5 screws. And they go into the brass uh, casing of the N20 motors. All N20 motors have that. Uh, two screws either side of the output shaft. So our little a piece is fixed there we have a little arm for the steering mechanism and we have two lock nuts a uh, top and bottom that are going to provide our hinging uh, position for the wheel i just have a 3d printed a little wheel it's a pretty much a replica i think of the uh, wheel that was on the model only now we have the D-shaft uh, coupling at the back there. I have a little uh, grub screw in a brass insert there. I tried to glue that in. It probably hasn't worked uh, very well. So we'll probably have to revisit that later. But for now it will, it will do what we need. So that obviously pushes on with the D-shaft. And the idea was that you would tighten the little grub screw. And that would stop the wheel from falling off there. Now to mount onto the body itself I 3d printed this little section here which is going to connect in where these little screw posts are so you can push that up this way and in and I have it upside down so that's not working because it's actually tapered down the chassis is tapered here so if we push that in and now it fits where it's supposed to go so we'll be able to mount that in. I have holes here for three screws, but they are not uh, drilled through yet. So I'll be able to drill them through at some stage. That is a, a lovely snug fit there. Even without the screws, that's quite tight, so that's perfectly fine. On that component, we also have these two screw holes here. They mount to these two posts. So we can screw that into position there. And that secures our cab in place before we do that though we need to mount our um, brackets here these um, uh, motor brackets they have to uh, be mounted through the the holes here this is our axle uh, pivoting points at the front here is the bracket for our servo so we need to mount our motors in this orientation so that the link between the two steering uh, frames I guess they're called uh, will be at the side where the servo is to make that connection easier so you'll see that in a little while okay so let's just uh, try and start to put this together um, I can't remember if it's supposed to go this orientation or this orientation I think it's this one so we'll try it anyway and find out so as I said before we have lock nuts in 
these brackets so we should just have to screw that together and once we screw the bolt in far enough it will catch in the little locking material in the nut so that's probably tight enough another little bit well we're off to a bad start i've put the wheel on the wrong direction so that's not gonna work that's more like it and the other one on the other side so that's how our steering is supposed to work obviously when you put the weight down on this the wheel is going to try to rotate up the weight so we need another little bracket across here to hold those two at the correct spacing so we'll put this bolt here and the same on the opposite side our motors are reasonably free at that so our two brackets meet at the front here we can get bolts through there but that's also where the servo is going to mount so our servo will mount like that the bolts will go through the servo through both brackets and that will hold all of that together then we have our connecting piece on well between the two steering frame pieces so a couple of bolts in there and that will hold that little l-shaped bracket on and that will connect then to the arm on the servo so i'll go and connect all these things up and then i'll show you what it looks like when when everything's connected basically the front components are now assembled here so we have our servo just using a paper clip just an easy way to make a connection there so we can test it and we are just using our servo tester that we repaired the other day so i'll try and show you the mechanism moving and if we look from the bottom you can maybe get a, a closer look at how the mechanism is sort of working so the motors come pretty close to each other but they don't hit each other and we're getting quite a good lock on the wheels so don't forget that uh, these wheels will be driven so we should be able to uh, do a, a software sort of differential with them so that the outer wheel moves faster and that would also help with our steering so when our steering wheels are pulling the vehicle we should be able to get a really tight uh, turn and circle from this truck even though it has well has it got yeah so there's eight wheels on the back two wheels on the front so you know, despite all of that uh, rubber being on the sandpaper which our roads are made of it's uh, well it should be able to turn pretty good uh, we'll hopefully get uh, better steering than the uh, Siku Scania R620 that I have although that uh, steering is pretty bad in that truck and uh, I really need to go back and check on that so as you can see this mechanism is working pretty good so I'll just uh, reassemble the rest of the truck so this the cab screws on here that screws on to this piece but we'll have to screw this piece onto the rear section first because this will cover over the screws I think at the back so I think we have to assemble this to this first this to this first and then those two assemblies together I might have to make some room here actually because I think that servo was going to hit yeah so on the front here I'm going to need to cut a rectangular section out here just to let the servo pop up through you won't see that though because it'll be hidden behind the grill here so uh, that will all be covered but other than that i think the screws are all going to line up nicely so i'll cut this little section and we'll get the truck back together and see what it looks like i have our steering mechanism mounted into the lower half of the uh, cab here 
the seats there um, I dropped this and they just auto deleted themselves so uh, they'll have to be glued back in I guess but the mechanisms in here I have this wheel off because it's kind of sticking out a bit too far so I don't know maybe there's a uh, plastic or something in this one that's not letting it go in as far as the one on the other side so it was kind of in a way but just to show you the next thing we need to do is take out the piece out of the mud guard here so the wheel is now touching that but it's not touching the outer side which is ideal that's yeah, that's, that's fine that it's touching in here we definitely don't want it touching um, the outside so that we can retain this sort of lip around the outer mud guard I mean if we had to we can always 3d print something to add strength to this piece but we have to cut it to get the wheel to rotate and it's the same at the back we pass past the lip over there but we are we are touching at the back there so we have to get rid of the section at the back so that we can let the wheel go through a full rotation so that's the next thing i need to do just cut a section out of here and a section out of here i want to be careful i don't want to cut too much off this part because these are the mounting points for the rear section here so there's a pin sticking out there and i guess this pin sticking out here just holds the bottom piece in place again we can 3d print parts to add a little bit more rigidity uh, to the joint between these two parts but for the most part that's the plan at the minute and you can see there i just cut that little section out of there let the servo up and i think that's looking nice and tidy in there so far so we're getting in the right direction a little bit more to do yet though I had to take a few more parts off the front here the grill and just the part that holds the lights it's not really a problem because we were going to have to take these off anyway to sort out the lights but what i've realized is the wheel here is actually if i cut the section out it's going to be taking a part out of where the step is here so since the wheel is probably slightly sticking out there i think i will bring these maybe a millimeter closer these two motors and let's just see how much that impacts our steering we can always increase this again if we had to and then we'd probably lose that little bit of the step but it probably wouldn't be a disaster but we'll try and avoid it first if we can so that means i'll have to re 3d print these frames so i'll go off and do that and we'll take a look at that in another video because I am also uh, 3D printing another version of the suspension for the back of the truck. So when I have all those 3D prints done, we'll check out how the suspension at the back is going to work, the new version. And we'll try the reduced uh, frame here for the front wheels. And then maybe we'll put the whole thing together and just see, give it its first little test drive with the uh, six wheel drive, see what it's like. So that's it for today. Thanks very much to our sponsors PCBWay. Again, if you're thinking of getting your PCBs manufactured, you should uh, definitely check out PCBWay.com. And thanks to you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure and hit the thumbs up. And don't forget to get subscribed so you don't miss out on the next video. Thanks very much for watching guys. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you don't want to miss out on the next video, click the subscribe button below and get the bell on for notifications. A big thanks to all our patrons, sponsors and you guys buying the PCBs for your own projects. That all helps to support the channel and keep the content coming. And speaking of content, there should be links on the screen now to a few more videos if you want to keep watching. And if you go to the channel homepage, you'll see that there are plenty of playlists there to check out. But that's all I have for today, so I'll see you in the next video.